Okay, so today um, we'll look at generalized additive models. Maybe I think probably more accurate to call it um, additive models. And maybe as a prerequisite to that topic, um, we have to cover scatter plot, scatter plot smoothers, and generalized additive models, okay? And, um, and perhaps it, let's, um, it makes sense to compare the uh, additive model to the, to a linear model, okay? So if you have a multiple linear model, a multiple linear model looks something like this, right? We got y sub i, and you'll have a, you know b zero plus b one, um, kind of x1 plus, uh, I guess, x1i and b2 x2i plus b3 x3i, so on and so forth until, uh, you know, b sub p x sub pi plus the error term for that thing, right? So you have Okay. Yes. Yeah, have the the thing changes color as the sun sets. <laughs> um, okay. So so this is kind of our our multiple linear model, right? And then um, and if you were to have you know polynomial regression, it would be something like. be something like this, you might have uh, just basically one x predictor Okay, and and these actually, they are in essence they are additive models. Okay, the uh, the linear model has the advantage of basically you know you've got your output is a, is a combination of you know kind of the relationship between um, y sub i and and each of these. Things. There's a there's a basically a linear relationship between your output and each input variable. Okay. So you know these are additive models in the sense that the output y is found by adding together you know, some combination of the predictors. And with a, uh, you know, with a linear model, we have a nice 
interpretability, okay? Such that, you know, if, if y is equal to, you know, a plus, not a, um, you know, b0 plus b1 x1 and b2 x2, you can say if x1 goes up by 1, we predict that y goes up by beta 1, okay? Or, you know, if x2 goes up by 1, we predict that y goes up by beta 2, or changes by beta 2 if beta 2 is negative or something like that. Okay? So you have this very nice uh, interpretability when you have linear models. Okay? And similarly, uh, with polynomial regression, you also have nice interpretability, except now it depends on some uh, polynomial function of, the, uh, of each variable, right? So now, you know, now there's a quadratic relationship or a cubic relationship between y and, uh, and the predictor x, okay? Um, what we do in uh, generalized additive models is basically we take off the restriction that the relationship between y and the x has to be defined by a linear or polynomial function and we just say, as long as it's a smooth function, we, we're okay with it, okay? So we kind of a, um, we'll call these GAMs, okay? These are the generalized additive models. We'll remove the restriction that y and x has a nicely defined um, relationship. Okay, so no longer Has to be linear or some mathematical function. Instead, we just say the, re the relationship between y and each x has to be smooth, okay? So we might say something like, here we've got um, okay. So we'll say here we have variable one, and maybe the relationship between y and variable one looks. Uh, looks something like this. Okay, and then maybe the relationship between y and variable two is that it looks like that, and then maybe uh, the relationship between 
y and variable 3, you know, looks like that. Okay? And so, so maybe there's a, a linear relationship between y and variable 3, but between y and variable 2, it's, it's not linear. And we, don't, we might not have a mathematical expression for this exact relationship. And we might not have one for the relationship between y and variable 1. Or maybe, maybe this is polynomial. Maybe this is some kind of cubic function or something. Okay? But, so, so we lose maybe like these nice... Um, we don't have like formulas for the mathematical relationship between y and each variable, but we do have kind of a graphic representation and we just say, okay, and the result of when we add these together is going to be what y is, okay? So we no longer have mathematical formula that relates x and y. Okay. But the result is still highly interpretable. We can see the kind of relationship that underlies y and variable 2 and y and variable 3 and y and variable 1. And we can say that, oh, okay, you know, we have, um, if we're high on variable 1, high on variable 2, and high on variable 3, we can expect y to be uh, quite large because that's, that's kind of on the, the high end. Whereas, you know, if we're um, right here for variable 1, you know, where variable 1 is quite large. And even if we're not on the high end for variable 2, if we're right here and, uh, and if we're like right here on variable 3, we would still expect y to be very large. We can kind of look at the graph and, and see the relationship. And we can see that, oh, you know, the relationship between variable 2 and y, um, you know, in the beginning, changes of uh, variable 2 make a huge difference, but then after a certain point, changes a variable to no longer um, have an impact on y or something like that, okay? Whereas, you know, the, the expressing a relationship like that is not possible in just a strictly multiple linear regression, right? In multiple linear regression, it just says if x1 keeps getting bigger, then, um, you know, y is going to keep increasing by, um, you know, that coefficient that's tied to x1 or x2, whatever it is. So, I mean, conceptually, does this make sense, what we're doing? So, no longer, um, so we gain a lot of flexibility, okay, in terms of the kinds of relationships y can have with each of its variables, um, but it's still very interpretable in that we can see, we have a visual picture of the relationship that y has with each variable, okay, and it's, and it's not restricted to just a, a linear or polynomial relationship. Yes? Is there a more, uh, I guess, like, uh, I don't know, like, closed form way to describe smooth? Like, you say the relationship between y and each other? Yes, and yes. Uh, smooth, um, yeah, basically smooth just means the second derivative exists everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's 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 kind of what we're going to use okay. to um, to establish this when we say things have to be smooth. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there just needs to be smooth and uh, and yeah, we'll we'll define that uh, a little bit more, okay? And so to kind of talk about talk about this, we're going to talk a little bit about regression and smoothing splines first and uh, local regression. Okay? So so we will
Okay, so let, let me back up a tiny bit and we'll, uh, we'll go back and we'll cover kind of polynomial regression. You guys have already covered polynomial regression in the 402 class? Not yet, maybe. But, um, well, you've covered the multiple linear regression part, right? So it's, it's just that, just now with polynomial terms. Okay. So a linear regression would be y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1x plus an error term. And then polynomial... would be, you know, y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1x plus beta 2x squared plus beta 3x cubed, so on and so forth, to beta dx to the d plus the epsilon, okay? And, you know, having more terms... can give you more flexibility but can also uh, lead to overfitting. And, you know, in linear regression, you know you're not supposed to extrapolate, but then um, with polynomial regression, extrapolating is extremely dangerous. So, for example, let's say um, you have data that look like something like this, right? Okay, and so, you know, you, you fit some kind of polynomial regression here, and this is basically um, the region where you have collected data, okay? So you have data between here, and you have data, so this is kind of our region where we have data. And so extrapolating just means, you know, don't make any kind of predictions outside of this region where we've collected data, right? And so if we were to do um, polynomial regression, maybe it would look something like this, okay? But then if we were to extrapolate, we have no idea what could happen, right? Like if we were to continue the thing, it might... Um, look something like that or you know maybe it, it goes down or who knows right it could venture up like that or venture down you know all sorts of stuff could happen outside of the um, outside of the zone where we have collected data okay so polynomial regression is often very inaccurate um, for, you know, regions where you have not collected data. And this, you know, might be reflected in 
the standard error term. Okay, um, you know, unless unless you're very conservative in terms of the number of terms that you fit, but if you start fitting like a an eighth order term. You know, there, there are, you know, rarely things in, there aren't too many things in real life where there really is an eighth order relationship between y and some predictor. And, uh, and so, you know, those, those things grow, you know, very rapidly or, um, and so you could, you can get something like that. So, you know, maybe it's accurate for the zone where you have data, which, which we would expect, but, you know, maybe outside of that, we lose that as well. Okay. On the other hand, we have um, let's um, okay, and so uh, to get into the idea, we're gonna. I want to introduce the concept of a basis function. Okay, and a basis function. Maybe um, to illustrate this, it makes sense to talk about uh, step functions here. Let's talk about a step function. So if we have some data here, let's say, Just making stuff something up here okay let's say this is what what we have a step function will just try to fit kind of flat lines to the uh, the data it might try to do something like this it might say okay here here's something and then we'll cut up to here and we'll um, a line right there. We'll come here and we'll just go up to there. And it just says, okay, this is the relationship that that we have between um, x and y, or something like that. Okay. And each of these breaks we would kind of denote as a, um, cut points. This is uh, C1. This would be cut point two. So we have cut points. And, uh, and we would establish kind of um, our, our equation would be kind of the form, let me just Okay, so we'd say for x less than c1, where c1 is our first cut point, then y is equal to b0. Okay, so this height right here is at b0. Okay, and then we would say for x being between uh, c1 and c2, then y is going to equal b0 plus b1. Okay, so that means this height right here is b1. 
Okay, and this height right here would be B2, and this is would be a B3, uh, and kind of a negative B3. And so on, and, and so over here we have for C2 less than X less than C3, Y is equal to B0 plus B1 plus B2. And then lastly, for Is that okay? Did I do this? I'm sorry, maybe. I, I apologize. I, I messed this part up. It's just uh, B0 plus B1 and B0 plus B2 and B0 plus B3 and um, yeah this is this is what we have okay and and we can combine all of this so let me just fix this I apologize here And so, you know, all of these equations can be combined. By using uh, some basis functions, okay, which we will um, call uh, basically that uh, um, you know x is within a certain range, okay? And so we have the um, we'll have a function c sub zero of x, and this is equal to um, i of x being less than c one. So this is, this means one when x is less than c1 and 0 otherwise, or 0 elsewhere. c1 of x is going to be c1 is less than x is less than c2, OK, which basically means one when this is true and zero elsewhere. Okay, so we have if we say these things exist, we can combine them all and we'll say that y sub i is equal to b0 plus b1 times c1 of x plus b2 of times c2 of x all the way up, you know, so on and so forth up to b sub k C sub k of x 
plus an error term. Yes, question. So those green uh, annotations would have to be right the, from from B zero. I've I have to I have to fix that. I apologize. Yeah. So if we um, take a look at the form of kind of the polynomial regression and our stepwise function, we can kind of see uh, the form that of maybe how a basis function could work. Okay, so let me um, Flip back a couple of slides to kind of our for polynomial regression we had this. And then for the stepwise function, Let's take this. And so we could just say, um, you know, we'll generalize this to base basis functions. Where we have um, y sub i is equal to some constant b0 plus b1 times b1 of x sub i, okay? This is our first basis function, and this is, this is not b, this is b1 of x sub i, and this is b2 of x sub i, Okay, so each um, b sub k of x is a basis function. So for polynomial regression,
b sub k is equal to x um, b sub k of x of i is equal to x of i raised to the k power. Okay, that's what the basis functions are for polynomial regression and for kind of our stepwise functions. Um, you know, if we just have a b sub j of x sub i, that's equal to the kind of the indicator of, well, we would just say it's c sub j of x sub i, which is equal to the indicator that um, x sub i is between c sub j and c sub j plus 1. And so, um, so if we free ourselves from the constraint of what the um, what our basis functions uh, are, then we can expand to you know kind of any kind of form here. So um, we'll take a look at this at an idea of what we can call a regression spline, um, starting with a, uh, a piecewise polynomial. Right. So is, is this form here of a, of a basis function to kind of generalize the relationship, or not even the relationship, but just to say that polynomial regression and stepwise functions can be seen as just a specific case of, uh, you know, using a ba basis function. Okay, so let's, um, let's talk about piecewise polynomials, okay? So um, maybe uh, we want to try to fit a bunch of piecewise cubic polynomials, right? So we could have some kind of data like this. just making something up here okay and somebody might look at that and say oh you know what I'm going to split this into a few zones here something I don't know, I'm, I'm making this up and uh, and for each one maybe we try to fit um, like a, a cubic function here. Something like that, okay? So each, each of these being a polynomial function and we're just kind of fitting, um, you know, we kind of split our data up into different pieces and we just fit a polynomial uh, polynomial equation to kind of each each chunk. section basically. All right, so let's say um, you know we want to fit 
a uh, so let's say to fit you know a piecewise uh, piece fit piecewise cubic polynomials not a but fit piecewise cubic polynomials okay and uh, and we will have um, and we'll call each of these locations these are called knots So a knot is a location where the coefficients in the um, uh, where the where the coefficients change. Okay, because each. Um, cubic function has the form yi equal to b0 plus b1 xi plus b2 x squared xi squared plus b3 xi cubed Okay, so this is kind of our cubic polynomial, but this one, this, so this one might, this is cubic, and these are these might all be cubic, except the coefficients have changed, right? So this one, so y sub i would be kind of a combination of, first we've got b0, 1, kind of our, our first one will be 0, 1 plus b1, 1, xi plus be uh, 2, 1, xi squared plus b3, 1, xi cubed plus epsilon. And then we would have in the second, right, b0, 2 plus b1, 2, dot, 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 b2, 2, dot, dot, you know, dot, 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 and b3, 2. Epsilon, okay, and this is for um, you know x less than uh, not one. And this is for not one less than or equal to x less than or equal to not two, etc., etc., etc. So I'll call this not one. Not two and I guess not three. Okay, so we've got um, you know all of these different knots, and this is where the the equation equation changes, right? Okay, so can we? Um, so you know, let's let's just look at kind of this. Let's say there's a function where there's only one knot, okay? Rather than having to worry about three knots and having four different equations, you know, let's just look at kind of the scenario where we just have one knot and two different equations here. So we'll just kind of look at this here, and. You could have um, it's possible to have um, the polynomials be uh, disjoint, right? So okay. So this could go here and this could go there or something. And this these are, you know, Is possible for it 
to be disjoint, which is which is undesirable. Okay, so uh, what we can do is we can force some constraints as far as the uh, coefficients that we select, right? So we can force coefficients. We can uh, put constraints. get selected okay and so um, one way to uh, do this is by um, you know so one is we can just force them to be continuous right but then um, it, they might not be smooth so if you forced the, uh, the data to be continuous but not smooth, you can get something so if, I, if I have this and uh, you know I could end up getting something that that is continuous. Okay, but again, not smooth. And then lastly, um, you know, if we want something that, that is smooth, we could also force that. And the way we go about doing that, uh, so this is continuous but not smooth and this basically um, you know the betas are chosen so that um, beta beta 0 1 plus beta 1 1 X I plus beta 2 1 X I squared and Beta three one x i cubed is equal to beta one one plus I'm sorry beta zero two plus beta one two beta two two plus beta three two x sub i at x sub i equal to the naught right so this is this can be done all right we can force this. Um, equality somewhere in into the uh, as we select them and this would be continuous but not smooth and uh, and to force smoothness okay okay we have to um, we force that um, the first and second derivatives uh, are equal uh, also at the um, uh, at the knot and so you know this basically just says that you know so at the knot the equip the functions have to be equal but to force smoothness we can also just say the first derivative so that would be um, b11 plus b21 or I guess you know 2 b21 uh, x so you know x plus 3b31 xi squared is equal to basically the uh, the other thing b12 so etc 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 b12 and then and then the second derivative so you'd have uh, 2b21 plus 6b31 x sub i has to equal 2b22 plus 
six b three two x sub i at x i equal to the naught. So we can kind of force force these things into the calculations of our coefficients. So we can force um, force those things to to ensure that uh, you know that will ensure that the uh, second derivative is continuous there, which will ensure smoothness in our in the resulting function. Okay, so then um, but then you know how how can you know this this seems kind of complex trying to force the smoothness to just say, okay, well, we're going to pick these coefficients so all of this uh, can be done. Um, okay, we can. Um, Use the basis model to represent how uh, you know to represent a regression spline. Okay, regression spline. So um, so if we have a cubic spline, with k knots. Can be um, modeled as the following. So we can say yi is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 uh, b1 x sub i uh, plus b2 beta 2 b2 x sub i. Okay, and then if we have k knots, then we're going to need to go all the way up to beta k plus 3, b k plus 3, x sub i plus epsilon. Right, and then. Um, And so we'll start off with a basis for a cubic polynomial. Okay, so we uh, okay. So we start off with a basis for a cubic polynomial, which would be kind of the um, y is equal to beta 0 plus um, beta 1 x sub i plus beta 2 x sub i squared plus beta 3 x sub i cubed. OK, so we start with this. So this, these are our first three terms. Okay, and then for each knot, okay, we will add a truncated uh, power basis per knot. So what, what's a truncated power basis? Okay, so this is going to be um, sorry, xi. It's, um, it's a function of x and um, xi. Okay, xi is the location of the knot.
and we call this x minus i cubed plus, okay? So the plus here, this means um, it only applies to the right. right of xi, okay? And so this is equal to x minus x of xi cubed. If uh, x is greater than xi and 0 otherwise. And so if we, um, if we use a basis function like this, all right, this will not affect the uh, first and second derivatives at the point x equal to xi, okay? Right, because at the uh, first derivative, it's basically at um, is equal to three uh, x minus xi squared at x equal to xi. So this is going to be equal zero, and then. Uh, the second derivative is would be what six times x minus xi at uh, x minus at x equal to xi, which is also going to be zero. Right. So this will not affect using a basis function like this will not affect the um, first and second derivatives. So we can guarantee. So using these basis functions, keep the function smooth. And then to uh, then so uh, we basically just fit um, least squares regression to you know however many knots you have plus three predictors right so um, so if we have you know so if we fit you know cubic um, basis spline. with one knot, all right? So then we're going to have y sub i equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times that x sub i plus beta 2 x sub i squared plus <coughs> beta 3 x sub i to the third plus kind of a, a beta 4 at uh, h uh, x xi, okay. So we have we have this, and then so you just have a uh, you know do least squares regression um, 
to uh, for these four predictors. I'm sorry, five predictors for these uh, five predictors. So you know, degrees of freedom would equal five if you have one knot, or in general, df would equal k plus four, k k being number of knots. So fitting. Least squares regression for something like this seems um, seems kind of you know reasonably uh, reasonable there. Okay. Is that all right for uh, kind of a cubic basis plane? Yes. What is the assumption of how this uh, um, evaluates you in this for the last time? Yes, yeah, so that, that's just, uh, again, uh, it's x minus xi cubed, OK? But only when x is greater than xi, OK? so. Um, so if you had to do uh, something like this uh, in R, like we wouldn't we wouldn't have to do this because there's these these functions exist for us. You could um, like if you were going to do this kind of almost the manual way in R, you would write something like linear model between y as predicted by um, x plus, what is it, i x squared plus i x cubed. And then, um, and then you would need to, um, somewhere in your data, you would have to kind of come up with um, like a not <laughs> not sub x, which would be um, kind of an if-else x is greater than um, xi, then it will be um, the quantity uh, x minus xi cubed and 0 otherwise. Right, so this will this will create a vector of the quantity x minus xi quantity cubed if x is greater than xi and it's zero elsewhere. So it's it, you're you're basically adding a predictor in here, um, and then and so you would add this in into your set of predictors, and this would be not, I guess, not one x. So you would do uh, this uh, a linear model here, and then you it would spit back. Um, kind of five coefficients here. But, uh, does does that make sense? No. Yes. So in this case, then, or if in a case where you had these uh, basis functions, would your D not be a uh, just a combination of all the offsets on the cubics? Wait. Say say that again. So uh, is your intercept or your D not? Um, is it going to be the combination of all the offsets of each of the cubic splines? Combination of the offsets of your cubic splines. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not sure if I fully understand. So, what like, you mean uh, by that, since our since our cubic splines, if it's modeling like the data, uh -huh. it's not going to be based at the origin. It's going to be shifted upward for each model. So is the intercept, is it, a, like, is it just a combination of all those like different um, offsets or like how high up it is from 
How it should be, you think? Uh, I think I think it ends up being a little bit different because these these things are still in play at almost all mm -hmm. uh, everywhere here. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, but yeah, because well, let's see. Yeah, the, the term here will be uh, cubically related to the quantity x minus xi at, uh, at, at that part here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, did you still have a question? Or lim lim uh, I just can't like, conceptualize what the point of adding a cubed term that refers to the distance uh huh. Okay. Here, let me let me see if I can draw a picture that that better explains this. Um, so let's and maybe maybe I, I will fail at at this uh, this thing here. Okay. So let's say we've got um, this is this is where our knot is going to be, and let's say um, let's. Um, I don't know. We're we're just going to draw some some dots here, and so let's say um, for this part, let's say the relationship is going to be b zero plus b one x one plus b two x squared plus um, b three x cubed. Okay, and then so let's just for simplicity, let's say all of these b's are uh, equal to one. Okay, so we've got 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. Okay, so let's, let's say we have that, and we will go uh, for the values. Um, we'll start at 0, and we'll go 1, 2, and 3, and then we'll put a knot at 4. Okay, and then so just, just so everything kind of fits, at 0 we will be at, um, so with x equals 0 and x equals one x equals two and x equals three and x equals four. What are our values? We got um, one, and then here we got one, two, three, four, and then two plus four plus eight. I don't know what that. What is this? <laughs> I can't add two, four, eight. Uh, this is going to be fifteen, right? And then at cubed, we've got twenty-seven and nine is thirty-six plus three is thirty-nine, and this, so this is going to be forty. And then at x equal to 4, this is 64, plus 16 is 80, plus 4 plus 1, so 85, okay? So I don't know, we've got, um, so we'll get a dot, you know, right here, right here, and then, um, you know, and, and it's growing very rapidly, right? Let's go, it, this is now at uh, 85, okay? And then we're going to say, let's say at this point, 5 and 6, and seven or something, um, we uh, we want to um, I don't know. Think things are going to change now. Okay, so uh, we're gonna I don't know so, something like this. I have no idea what this looks like. Okay, so the basis function h of x um, xi here. If xi is our xi is equal to 4 here, then this is equivalent to, um, here, let me just, let me, let me back up here. So over here, these values that I got were by doing um, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, we had x, x squared, and x cubed. This was uh, 1, 1, 1, and here uh, we had 2, 4, and 8, and here we had uh, 3, 9, 27, and 4, 16, and 64, okay? And we, we got these values by, did I miss something here? Oh, right. I forgot the 0, right. Okay, 0, 0, 0. One 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 uh, two four eight. 
3, 9, 27, and 4, 16, 64. So we, we're basically adding these together and adding 1 to get this, okay? And over here, now I have basically another column, h of x xi, which is equal to the quantity x minus xi, so in this case, x minus 4, quantity cubed, okay? So at x equal to, um, and before all of this, this is all zeros. So at everywhere before, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's all zeros, but then at x equal to 5, this column is equal to, is going to equal 1. And at x equal to 6, it's going to equal um, 8. And at x equals 7, it's going to equal uh, 9, no, wait, <laughs> 3 cubed, 27. Okay, so now we have another term um, th that, that's in play here, except, um, and, and all of these values continue growing. Uh, you know, this will be at 5, 6, and 7, and this one's going to go 25, 36, 49, and so on and so forth. And so now it's just another term, and then we're going to try to fit some kind of um, coefficient to, to balance these things out. So maybe it's something like, uh, you know, negative whatever to... To, to kind of force a, some smoothness here. Um, no, uh, you're going to use the same coefficient, okay, for, for all of them, except, but now that we're trying to do um, least squares regression and minimize kind of the, the total sum of squares, we probably will need to change um, B0, B1, B2, and B3 for the entire picture. Maybe? Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, here, I'll, I'll try this. Um, All right, so we'll just say x is uh, the values 1 through 8, okay? And then so x, we'll call it x squared will be, um, we'll just kind of manually do this. x to the cubed, x cubed, and then, so then we'll have... Um, which is going to just be x minus 4 uh, raised to the third, but only when, um, so if I do this, and I look at what h of x is, okay, we only want it to start here. So we're going to just say kind of h underscore x for uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, We're going to zero these out. Okay, so now I have um, h underscore x is what I have. Yeah, I'll have this. Okay, so I have this, and these are these are my terms here. And so now, if I have the um, if y is going to be uh, one four fifteen forty eighty five, let's say one. 1, 4, 15, um, 40, 85, and then let's just make up a few numbers. We'll say 100, then 90, and then 80. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so these are my terms here. I can just do a linear model between y as predicted by x plus x underscore 2 plus x underscore 3 plus h underscore x. So now I'm just fitting a linear model between these four predictors. Okay, and then so when I do that, we will get this, and this is uh, 
so what I have, and these are these are kind of my um, predictors now, and it and it looks very strange. And then let's see if I can. Uh, so let's create a plot between x and y. This is this is what my plot looks like, and um, let's see if we can uh, take my coefficients, bit and dollar sign coefficients. I have this and. Um, Sequence sequence from one to eight by um, point oh one, and then so the, our fitted y will be um, um, will be this. Um, sorry. CF uh, one CF two times XX plus CF three times XX squared plus CF four times XX to the third plus um, and so now I need to do a uh, HXX, which will be uh, FF. Let me just double check HXX. Yeah, okay. And then it's HXX cubed times CF. Okay, let's see if this works, and then we can kind of plot uh, lines uh, x x y y type equals L. Oh, hang on. XX minus 4. Okay, so this is... This is our resulting um, plot here of, of kind of a smooth... We get a, a thing that's smooth because uh, it's, it's trying to fit, uh, you know, a cubic thing to the, to the whole... Uh, resulting, I don't know. <laughs> um, it, so it's it's again we have predictors. One is x, which is one through eight. We have a x squared predictor, which is just x squared x cubed. And then at the not x four, we're just taking the value x minus four and we're raising it to the third power. Okay. And we're, for our linear model, we're just saying these are my four predictors. Okay, and we're fitting the uh, the model between y and those four predictors. Okay, I don't. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so you know, uh, this part just does least squares um, regression to try to minimize the total sum of squares. And so, as a result, the predictors for um, our coefficients. You know our coefficients. This was not what we expected, right? Because kind of the the model for at least the first four points were just the coefficients were one, one, and one. But clearly, it, it has changed when when we're trying to fit everything overall as, as a whole. On to that. Oh, it's already seven thirty. Okay, we'll take. A, why don't we take a break here, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll uh, we'll look at smoothing splines and all of this. But um, but that's what we have.